try to give a short introduction how I get the iPad app when I play them via MIDI into Cubase 10. How do I do this? So first of all, uh, I have Audio Bus 3 running on one iPad. You know how it works, yes, you put in something. I have this wonderful strings in here and a mini moog and a mixer. Uh, and I have uh, an Audio Bus Remote to change between the different apps here. So uh, on Audio Bus Remote I can change into the different apps. This is Orchestra Strings, Pizzicato, Legato um, and this is the Mini Moog. So how do I do this? Uh, lightning goes out via a special cable into this wonderful iConnect MIDI 2 Plus L. L stands for lightning. The other output here, USB, goes into uh, an USB hub and from the hub uh, it goes directly into Cubase. So this is the MIDI routing and do not forget there's also audio routing through this Connect MIDI 2 Plus. I don't use that right now. You can do it. Um, and MIDI comes from Artoria. In Cubase I've set up a MIDI track and the output of the MIDI track is going right into the settings. You see there's this MIDI out, I connect MIDI. So you do have to do some MIDI routing and I use uh, the no normal internal sound card here. Normally you, you need uh, something like ASIO for all uh, when you want to put the iConnect uh, also as a media audio interface so that it's directly going in there. I found the latency was quite too high so I did it th the easy way here. So what did I do now? Uh, it goes in there and next point is I'm gonna record something. It's quite easy. I just press record, you have the click and then you record something just like this. because there's the I connect. You can play it back, yes. And the latency is quite good. You can go in there and edit everything and uh, as you do it with the plugin in there. But the point is you can't render this in place because it's not an internal VST plugin. For that I just put in an audio track and routed uh, the output uh, in there. You can have a look. Uh, it's coming in there. So, I just record it, just a second, and you're gonna see now, it's getting into the audio track. Well, I should have the volume a little more, but it's working. This is a really nice sound very recommendable and when, and when I want to listen to it I just put it solo and now it's the audio track and coming in here and you see it and you can go into the mixer and do all the wonderful things you can do with Cubase go into the inserts and pimp it up a little bit put on a chorus or dynamics whatever you want to do because it's audio now right in between or in Cubase so what about the other synth I, I uh, said I have a, I have a mini Moog so I kill this here, I don't know, need this MIDI track anymore. And after that I go into audio bus again. You have the mixer in the audio bus. And I just put down or mute the strings and put up uh, the mini moog. And here it is. Just check a little bit. What do you think of this? It's really wonderful, you can really do this. But don't forget that I connect MIDI 2 is also capable to not use an external sound card with ASIO for all. You can try to do this 
everything with the special routing inside of Cubase, just inside Cubase, it's possible. But uh, I found it too complicated. If you have a sound card somewhere, no problem. You just route the audio out, audio out of the iPad into there, and you have a stable system, good latency. Uh, but iMIDI Connect uh, gives this opportunity to play it in, play it back again, uh, to con connect many MIDI things in. And don't for forget uh, Audio Bus 3 uh, to change immediately between the different settings. It's a little bit uh, um, tricky to do this, but in the end you find yourself using your wonderful iPad uh, things within Cubase and you can use the MIDI uh, things like arpeggiator. Many possibilities, check it out, have fun with that.